If you're building a simple chatbot that answers customers' questions based on companies' policies, Langchain will most likely suffice in getting the job done, since they're built for simple and deterministic tasks. However, some business requirements go way beyond a simple company chatbot. Let's say you're asked to build a deep research assistant software for your company that helps you go through large swath of information gathered from various sources. In this case, the use case is a lot more complicated than a chatbot, and using Langgraph will start to make more and more sense. One way to look at it is the threshold from changing from Langchain to Langgraph really comes down to a component that's called StateGraph. Essentially, when you use StateGraph, you have the ability to add what's called nodes and edges. A node is an individual unit of computation. So think of a function that you can call. And an edge is a transition between these nodes that can either pass through or be conditional. So let's go back to the deep research assistant as an example to understand the difference with a little bit more granularity. The entire process can be run using a graph where each node is responsible for a very specific task and each edge determines the flow or execution steps. So in our case, we need to create nodes for the following tasks. First, a node to search and gather sources. Second, a node to scrap and clean content. Third, a node to evaluate trustworthiness using an LLM. Four, a node to extract factual statements from the sources. And five, a node that generates a report. And once all these nodes and edges are configured and compiled, LangGraph will orchestrate them by executing them based on how it's configured. So for a deep research assistant, the graph will look something like this, where you have the starting node that serves as the entry point and all the nodes and edges that do individual tasks, and finally an end node that terminates the workflow. Now what makes LangGraph special is what's called state graph, meaning they all have a shared state. A state essentially serves as a persistent memory for the workflow to store pertinent information at all different parts to the workflow. So in our case of deep research assistant, the state might look something like this. Class research state, topic that's a string, remaining URLs, which is a list of strings, current URL, which is an optional string, content, which is an optional string, current score, which is an optional integer, and facts, which is a list of strings. So now that we have the state and the graph, let's actually see how LangGraph would execute them step by step. The topic in this case will be Tesla's earnings call. So the first node that gathers new sources and sites looks at the topic state and gathers information about Tesla's earnings call. It'll then populate all the results it got to a state variable called remaining URLs. The next node will scrape and clean the content from each URL and populate the state variable called current URL and the content that's within it so that it can be further processed by a later node. The next node will evaluate the trustiness of the information that was gathered and make sure that it scores it properly, appends it to the state variable called current score. And once all the URLs are scraped and scored properly, it'll then go to the next node that extract factual statements from all these sources. And finally, the last node will generate a report based on the facts that are given within the state graph. 